here, Seekers. I'm Nick. When Threadripper 2 was announced, Cooler Master announced they would be bringing a brand new cooler to the market to cool the 32 core 64 thread monster, the Threadripper 2990WX. Ever since they announced it, I've been wanting to get my hands on it, and that day has finally come, and we finally got one of our own. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day of the week, so do yourself a big old favor and make sure you're subscribed. I've been daily driving a Threadripper 1950X since the start of the year, and I've only ever used one other cooler on it that was up to the task of cooling it adequately. In this video, we're finally gonna take a closer look at the Cooler Masters Wraith Ripper Cooler for TR4 socket CPUs and see how it performs. We still haven't got our hands on any Threadripper 2 chips yet, but we will be getting some soon enough. So all the tests and everything we're going to talk about is related to the Threadripper 1950X. Let's take a look and see what you get for your hard earned money. When you open the box, you're greeted with a manual. You'll have to forgive me. I, I put it back in the box in a weird order when I unboxed it initially because I was really excited. <laughs> the cooler is quite large and it's pretty heavy and immediately it's clear that this is a premium cooler. The mounting system is one of the easiest that I've ever seen on a TR4 cooler. It has four long screws that go all the way through the cooler, which means when you tighten the screws on the top, you're actually rotating the screw that will hold it into the socket. The thermal paste is pre-applied, so you don't have to apply any of your own at all. For CPU coolers, for other sockets, I don't mind if it's pre-applied, but to be perfectly honest, for Threadripper, this is a welcome change. Threadripper is traditionally a socket that has a different thermal paste application to any other type of IHS. Taking thermal paste application out of the equation is, well, it's pretty nice. It's good that you don't have to think about it. It comes with a PWM fan cable and a SATA power cable that are attached to the cooler permanently. However, you can change the fan in the core of the cooler if you like. I didn't show this because this is going into a production system and I wanted to test it in its out of the box state, but it is possible, so don't ask why I didn't show it. Also included is a USB header cable so you can control the lighting effects in the Wraith Ripper software, but I'll come back to that a little bit later. The installation is very straightforward. However, it's possible that it could be different for your motherboard as clearances for GPU and memory could possibly be different. The motherboard in the system that I installed the Wraith Ripper into is using the ASRock X399 Professional Gaming. Take the protective plastic off the bottom of the heat spreader, drop it on top of the IHS of the CPU, making sure you line up the screws as you're doing it, and tighten up the four screws on the top. Once you're done with that, plug in the fan connector into the CPU fan header, plug the SATA power cable into a spare SATA power connector from your PSU, and plug in the USB header cable from the underside of the cooler into a free USB 2.0 header on your motherboard. The install process takes around five minutes at maximum. You probably also noticed that I didn't need to remove any of my GPUs or memory to install the cooler either. While I'm talking about memory and GPUs, I'm gonna answer the inevitable questions about RAM and GPU clearances. In my system, I use Corsair LPX memory, which is a low profile module. I was able to install and remove the memory quite easily once the cooler was installed. There's around 15 millimeters of clearance above the LPX memory or around about half an inch if you're from that part of the world. This means in most cases you should be able to install most types of memory modules quite easily. However, I would still recommend installing the memory modules before putting the cooler on. As far as GPU clearance is concerned, it's tight, but no tighter than the Noctua NHU14S TR4 SP3 that I had installed in there before. There's around five millimeters of clearance between the GPU and the cooler, which is more than enough. And like I mentioned earlier though, your motherboard could be different. I'm only going off my own experiences with the cooler on my motherboard that I use every day. At this point, I'm guessing you wanna know how it performs on the 1950X. Spoiler alert, it's very good. 
Let's check out some numbers for you numbers people. I tested this on my own personal editing rig. This is the rig that I'm editing this video on right now as well. Let's talk about some of the specs of the system before we move on as well. The CPU, as I mentioned before, is the Threadripper 1950X on the ASRock X399 Professional Gaming, running the latest BIOS version at the time of filming, which is version 3.3. I've also got the memory running with its XMP profile enabled at 3000 megahertz. The system is in the Cooler Master Master case H500M and if you want to check out the original build video for that system there is a little eye in the top right hand corner if you want to check that out but actually check that out at the end of the video. For all of these tests we set all of the fans in the system to 100% speed including the CPU fan. We let the system idle for one hour with each cooler to get a proper idle temperature with no applications running on the system and then we use the IDA64 stress test for one hour with each cooler to see if we could get a proper set of temperatures for a fully loaded CPU. All CPU temperatures were recorded with hardware info and the sensor we recorded was the T-Dye sensor which is the correct sensor for all Ryzen CPUs. The ambient temperature here at the moment is a fair bit warmer since it's summer here in Australia, so the Noctua results are a little bit warmer than when we last tested it when it was winter. At idle with the Noctua NHU14 STR4 SP3, we saw the maximum temperature spike up to 42.6 degrees with an average temperature of 31.4 degrees Celsius. At idle with the Cooler Master Wraith Ripper, we saw the maximum temperature spike up to 38.8 degrees Celsius with an average of 29.8 degrees. At idle on average, the Wraith Ripper performed around 14% better than the Noctua Cooler. At full load in IDA64 with the Noctua NHU14 STR4 SP3, we saw an average temperature of 63.2 degrees with a maximum temperature of 64.8 degrees Celsius. At full load in IDA64 with the Cooler Master Wraith Ripper, we saw the average temperature of 61.4 degrees Celsius with a maximum temperature of 62.5 degrees Celsius. At full load on average, the Wraith Ripper performed around 4% better, which is pretty negligible, and if I'm honest, the gap might be smaller or larger with a higher core count CPU, but to be honest, I don't have one, so I can't say that for sure. Let's quickly gloss over the lighting software as well. To be honest, most Threadripper users don't care or probably wouldn't care about this too much, but I thought I'd cover it anyway. The software does exactly what you'd expect it to do. It allows you to control the lighting. There are a bunch of different effects on three different areas of lighting to control. That's basically it. You can sync all three lights or set different effects for each lighting channel. Before anyone asks as well, no it won't work with AuraSync. Like I mentioned, the lighting options are there, but if I'm honest, most Threadripper users that I know probably would turn the lighting off or just set a single color, but that's just me. At the end of the day, do I think the Wraith Ripper is worth 129 US Freedom Credits? Yes, yes I do. Why do I think it's worth it though? Well, to be honest with you, I really love the Noctua NHU14 STR4. It's a phenomenal cooler, it's easy enough to install, and don't get me wrong, I don't hate it at all. I would also highly recommend it for Threadripper, since it's been nothing but amazing for me. The real selling point for the Cooler Master Wraith Ripper to me is, well, it's easier to install than the Noctua cooler, if that's even possible, because the Noctua one is stupidly easy to install. It has better GPU clearance, although that's probably up for debate based on your motherboard. It has RGB for those who want it. You don't have to apply your own thermal paste and the height is a bit lower than the Noctua cooler so you can fit it in smaller cases. What I can't say is how it will perform on the 2990WX or the 2970WX. But what I can say is that on the 1950X it's great. But then again, so is the Noctua cooler. At the end of the day, you can decide to pay for convenience, aesthetics or performance. I think the Wraith Ripper is a good combination of all of those three factors. I also wanted to mention this as well. Cooler Master sends us a lot of stuff because we upload basically every single day. So you can see how hard it is for us to keep that momentum up. However, they don't pay us a single cent for anything. If the video we're doing is sponsored or supported by a manufacturer in some way or another, both financially or not, there will always be an ad spot at the beginning, just like yesterday's video that we did with ASRock. I've seen a few channels trying to create views by talking about tech tubers doing paid endorsements and reviews. This is against the law in Australia. 
Instead of focusing on what other channels are doing, they should work harder on their own content. We only review the products we think are worth talking about and what you guys would actually be interested in seeing. To add to that as well, we also review products you guys ask us to do in particular as well. Like we get a lot of requests for certain products and we reach out to manufacturers to see if we can get them to try them out. We are community driven and we will always be that way. This is why we never trash talk products on the channel or try to clickbait you with stupid video titles and thumbnails. There are other channels for that and we're not one of them. If you're interested in grabbing one of the Wraith Rippers, there is a link in the description down below. Right now, they're going for 129 US dollars on Amazon. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak and we seek. And yeah, I just thought I needed to add that in because there is a bit of confusion about us being a small channel and being able to get things from brands. We just make content look better than everyone else. It's not that hard. Mm -hmm.